Okay, so welcome to the second video on the Wnt slash beta catenin pathway. So, we are at the stage where we have uh, seen that the activity of this beta catenin destruction complex is to add on uh, some functional group onto beta catenin, which will then allow ubiquitin to be bound onto it, i.e. it will allow the beta catenin to be ubiquitinated. And once you've been ubiquitinated, you are then uh, a target for the proteasome, basically, and you're going to be broken into pieces. Okay, uh, so the beta catenin destruction complex basically is uh, responsible for keeping beta-catenin levels in the uh, cytoplasm low. And basically, the beta-catenin destruction complex is made up of a whole bunch of different proteins. It's made up of five different proteins. Okay, so let me show you the five different proteins that beta-catenin destruction complex is made up of. Right, okay. So, let's begin. So, it's made up of five different proteins. So, where sh how should I draw this? Well, I'll just draw... Unfortunately, I, we'll have two ones there, and we'll have, then we'll have three here. Okay, so remember, it's just a cartoon. Uh, don't take it too literally. So, one of the proteins here is a protein known as axin. Okay. Another protein is something known as glycogen synthase kinase free, or GSK free, so I'll just label that up. Glycogen synthase kinase free. Synthase kinase free. Okay? Um, there we go. Another protein is something called adenomatous polyposis coli. And anything with a name like that suggests that it has something to do with cancer, that it's been found to be mutated in cancer, basically. Adenomatous polyposis coli, and that was how it was discovered. And we'll see a lot about this protein later on. It is indeed what is mutated, mutated in um, familial adenomatous polyposis. Right, and now uh, there's some proteins uh, that no one generally has ever heard of. Protein phosphatase 2A, or PP2A, and also casein kinase 1-alpha. Casein kinase 1-alpha. Right, so I'll just label them up as well, because they, they are part of this destruction complex, even though they're not as famous as the others. So this is protein phosphatase 2A, Protein phosphatase 2A. Is this still in view? Yep. Phosphatase 2A. And then uh, KSK 1-alpha uh, stands for casein, which is spelt like that, uh, kinase 2, um, well, sorry, casein kinase 1-alpha. Uh, Right, okay, so the beta-catenin destruction complex consists of these five proteins all bound together, and they function together to add this functional group onto beta-catenin, which then leads to beta-catenin being ubiquitinated and targeted for proteasomal destruction. Okay, so basically, what happens is uh, when, um, when Wnt goes up in the extracellular fluid, and it activates this Wnt signaling pathway, it binds to the Wnt receptor consisting of this LRP5-6 and this frizzled receptor. The frizzled receptor becomes active, it then binds to this disheveled protein, and now what happens is basically the beta-catenin destruction complex binds to the disheveled protein. So, uh, basically what's going to happen is this is going to bind to this, and when it does, what happens is uh, the disheveled protein inactivates the beta-catenin destruction complex. So beta-catenin destruction complex is firstly now sequestered at the membrane, and also it becomes inactivated. So basically, um, how am I going to show this? I will draw a line coming like here, and I will show the inhibitory symbol here. So it's an inhibition. Disheveled inhibits beta-catenin destruction complex. So if the beta-catenin destruction complex is no longer functional, then what's going to happen to your beta-catenin? Well, you are continuously making beta-catenin. So if you've now stopped destroying it, then what's going to happen? The beta-catenin that you have made is just going to stay in the cytoplasm and it's going to accumulate, and accumulate, and accumulate. So the result of activating this Wnt uh, 
beta catenin pathway is that beta catenin goes through the roof, basically. Beta catenin levels go up in the cytoplasm of our cell. So beta catenin levels have gone up, right? Okay, so what does beta catenin now actually do to the cell to actually cause it to go from being in the interphase to being in the G1 phase? Well, clearly it's going to have to alter the expression of proteins, basically. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go and have a look at what it does then. So, should we get and we'll go over onto the other side? Right, so overall, the effect that has happened so far, all of that signaling pathway, the overall effect that it boils down to is beta-catenin has gone up. So we now have beta-catenin. So we need to find out what does beta-catenin do. Well, basically, once you're accumulating beta-catenin in the cytoplasm, you're also going to be accumulating beta-catenin in the nucleus. So you end up with a higher concentration of beta-catenin in the nucleus. And basically, it is what is known as a transcriptional coactivator, which basically means that it binds to another transcription factor, and together they act as a... Um, a promoter for the expression of certain genes. So it's a transcriptional co-activator. And basically, uh, the transcription factors that it can bind to, well, one of them is known as T-cell factor. So there are many different types of T-cell factors, but basically beta-catenin can associate with these T-cell factor, um, factor transcription factors. And another one is known as lymphoid-enhancing factor. So we'll have another one over here, and this is lymphoid enhancing factor. Lymphoid enhancing factor. And basically, these are transcription factors which alter the expression of uh, genes within the cell, and which um, beta-catenin can bind to, and, um, prom and together what they will do is they will bind to DNA and uh, change the expression of genes within the cell. So basically, these are often abbreviated to TCF, T cell factor, and LEF for lymphoid enhancing factor. So often when we're discussing beta-catenin's effect, we just write, okay, there is some TCF or lymphoid enhancing factor, LEF transcription factor, and we say beta-catenin binds with this sort of family of transcription factors, so a T cell factor or a lymphoid enhancing factor. So that's just denoting it's either a T cell factor or it's a lymphoid enhancing factor. It's a transcription factor is the important thing. Right, okay, so what happens is beta-catenin is going to come and bind to this T cell factor or this lymphoid enhancing factor. So here comes beta-catenin, and I'll add some color to this picture to make it more obvious. Uh, so this TCF or LEF is either a T cell factor or a lymphoid enhancing factor. So I'll colour in both of these green. So these are transcription factors. And now beta catenin is a transcriptional co-activator. Now what does it mean to be a transcriptional co-activator? Well basically it means that these are transcription factors on their own. They do not need beta catenin to be uh, effective transcription, uh, transcription factors. But beta-catenin binding to them is going to change the way they interact with DNA. It's going to change potentially the sites at which they bind. It's also going to um, it's also going to affect how much they activate the transcription of certain sites as well. So it is going to change their properties basically as transcription of as transcription factors. Okay, right. So, uh, beta-catenin has bound to its transcription factor, and now the complex of beta-catenin with its T-cell factor or its lymphoid-enhancing factor is going to go into the nucleus of the uh, cell, and it's going to find some DNA, uh, and it's going to bind to the promoter regions of certain genes. So, let's say this is the nucleus of our cell, and here is some DNA, let's say here, and basically, this beta-catenin uh, uh, TCF-LEF complex is going to bind to the promoter regions of certain genes. So let's say this is a promoter region here, and here's the gene here. Okay, so let me just colour that in. So uh, we'll have, this is the promoter region in orange, and uh, this is the, um, oh no, I don't want to do it in that colour, I'll do it in blue. Here is the gene in blue. 
Right, so basically what's going to happen is that this uh, beta-catenin uh, TCF slash LEF complex is going to come in here and it's going to bind to the promoter region. So this is the promoter region of the gene. Promoter region. And here is the gene in blue. So gene. Okay, right. And uh, when the beta-catenin slash TCF LEF complex binds to the promoter region, it's going to alter the expression of that gene. So it's going to either make it more likely um, or less likely that RNA polymerase will bind basically to that promoter region and then start transcribing the gene. So you're going to alter the expression of this gene. And often what you'll do is promote the expression of that gene. Okay, right. So it alters which proteins basically you are making within the cell. So, how does that overall lead to the cell going from interphase into this first growth phase? Well, what happens in the first growth phase of the cell cycle? Well, basically, what you do is you start making the proteins that are going to be needed in order to uh, replicate the DNA. So remember, in, this is the cell cycle. You go from being in this interphase where you're not dividing to going into the G1 phase, which is basically your preparatory phase for S phase. S phase is actually where you start replicating the DNA. But basically, to prepare for that, you're going to have to make an awful lot of proteins that are going to be involved in replicating the DNA. So in G1 phase, that's what you're doing. You are making proteins that are going to be involved in DNA replication. So potentially, you're going to increase the amount of proteins you make that are involved in uh, protein, uh, proteins that you make that are involved in um, DNA replication. Now, I want to stress you do not start DNA replication yet. You are just preparing for DNA replication. In order to actually produce, um, in order to actually go from being in the G1 phase, this preparatory phase for uh, DNA replication, to going into the phase, the S phase, where you're actually um, replicating the DNA, you have to get across a G1S checkpoint. To actually begin uh, replicating the DNA, you, there is a checkpoint, basically. And this beta-catenin uh, TCF slash LEF complex also is getting ready to promote uh, you getting across that checkpoint. And we'll see how in the next video.